What is up, Doom Patrollers? Welcome to my interview slash little discussion that I had with Doom Patrol Cyborg, Javan Wade. So I don't want to waste too much time at the beginning of this. I just wanted to say that I hope you really enjoy it. We get into all kinds of things, such as all of the intimate scenes that Javan Wade has had playing his character this season, which, as you guys know, that there's been some very deep scenes, uh, you know, thoughts on where he can go from here, considering the situation that Vic Stone is in right now and how that can progress next year into season four we get into so many more things than that as well such as teasing the finale uh his thoughts on maybe joining ryan potter beast boy and titans and whatnot so yeah there's there's a whole bunch that we cover and also i can't forget that i included a bunch of your subscriber questions as well so stay tuned if you submitted a question to find out if your one was answered so other than that guys just give a thumbs up on this video i'd really appreciate that share it with all your friends all the doom patrol fans out there any dc fans uh, i'm really proud of this one so yeah i just hope you go ahead and enjoy it and make sure you subscribe to this channel if you happen to be brand new this year with my doom patrol coverage because i plan on doing more videos and discussions with other actors and whatnot just like this. One last thing as well, do not forget that on top of this, I did also do an interview with Shoshana Sachi, who is a writer and producer for Doom Patrol. There's a whole bunch of insight in that video as well. But for the time being, I will let you guys enjoy my little chat that I had with Javan Wade, who plays Cyborg on Doom Patrol, which I don't think you needed to be reminded of that, but enjoy. First of all, just thank you so much for talking to me today. It is such an awesome opportunity because I've really loved your character since season one. Um, but you. also, before we dive deeper into those questions, the Doom Patrol questions, I just want to say congratulations not only on season three, but season four. I, I was really happy that we got that announcement. Yeah, no, it was wicked to get it so early on, you know, especially for the show the last few seasons. It's been... Um, it's been... <laughs> six months after the season's come yeah. out and yeah it's nice to get the show on the road so um yeah man it's a blessing thank you so at the time of filming this at the time of filming this we've just got one episode to go for season three and i'm honestly so happy talking to you at this point because cyborg has gone through such a significant change one that i genuinely actually didn't expect the show to go through with at all um, so since you've literally played Cyborg this whole time, it must have been quite shocking for you uh, to, to play Vic in the way you haven't ever done before. So my question is, what was your reaction to reading the script for when Vic wakes up in the end of that room um, in the operating theater at the end of episode eight? Because, or was that like a thing you knew from the beginning? I don't know how if you learn it script by script or... Yeah, so so we, we get at the beginning of the season, we get an understanding of what the arc is going to be for the character, right? So we sit down with Jeremy Carver, our show runner, and he says, look, this is where the season is going to go. This is the arc for the character. But we don't get the specific details as to how things are happening, just kind of more broad strokes on what we're going to be exploring. So, um, you know, the words that were given was that Vic is going to be tussling between his humanity and between being cyborg and what it means to be cyborg versus what it means to be Vic Stone. And so you then start floating out what that could mean, what it could be. But yeah, the first time that it's as, as black and white as it is, is when you get that script and it says <laughs> like, well, well, well it, before, before then, you know, getting the scripts where Vic was even considering it, I'm like, okay, well, if he's going to be considering it, then yeah. this is potentially where we're going to be going. And um, so it was like episode six, episode seven, when I started to clock, oh wait, is he actually going to do this? Um, and then, yeah, when it came to eight and getting to the end of that episode and, and reading that he becomes full simp skin, it was mm. mind blowing. I think the reason why is because it's so brave. This is something that that hasn't been done um, in, in live action before and hasn't been explored. Um, and so kudos to our to our room patrol for being brave enough to kind of go on that journey, you know, because it is mm. it, it's crazy. It is crazy. So um, but at the same time, I was really excited because this the. the it's just, you know, uh, the arc of this season for Vic has been so bold and so brave. And um, that was just the icing on the cake, really. 
Yeah, the, the Doom Patrol writers are incredible. And I tried to look up something to do with anything from the comics of Vic having dealt with this before. And I think the closest I got was like a genie, you know, like a genie making that wish for Vic. But there's not all too much on it. It's quite unprecedented, I feel, for the character. And that's what makes it so interesting. And, and that kind of leads me into my next question. So with that scene you shared with Silas... Um, towards the beginning of that episode. I, I just love how multifaceted it is because you see a father's love for his son come out through his protective actions, uh, but also, you know, a son's frustrations. It's as though the road that Silas paved for Vic was done only with good intentions and it came across as a nice speech, but then the scene just turns uh, and Vic just kind of barks back, uh, you know, because Silas took away the very choice um, from him, that was the ability to define himself. And it's just interesting to think that he's both found himself, uh, but he's also a bit of a blank slate at the same time. So what do you think this means for Vic going forward? Does he really feel as though he's found himself again? Or do you feel like he needs to go on a whole other journey as to how he can enact change without those powers? Yeah, I, I, I think that uh, for Vic, the most important thing for him and his battle, especially with his dad, with Silas, has been that he he wanted a choice, and mm. I think that that's been the biggest thing that um, that he's been fighting for, and the frustration that he's had and that he has because he wasn't given that choice. And I think that you know he loves what it means to be cyborg and being able to protect and serve, but at the same time, he would rather and wish that he had the choice to make a decision for himself, and it wasn't forced upon him. And knowing that there was another way potentially that. His life could have been saved uh, without becoming cyborg. That's when it starts to get tricky because it's like, okay, now there was agendas in play. W was I just your your little toy, or or was this actually to save my life? Knowing that there was another way that you could have done this. Yeah. So I think that this is just the the start of that journey for Vic um, in in discovering who he is, and this is the first step for him to say, okay, I'm in this position where right now. I am, uh, I've been able to try myself to become, you know, who I want to be. And is this the right choice? Is being Vic the right thing? Or, or is it Cyborg? I don't know. But let's start with me having a choice. Yeah. You know, and being able to um, step into that and, and, and breathe again and remember what it feels like to be Vic and have the option that I, that I could have had when you first made me into Cyborg, Dad. You could have made me into this. You could have made me into mm -hmm. Vic with my synth skin. So let yeah. me visit that and see how that feels and let's take it from there. And that's where that, that frustration bottles up from. Yeah, it was it was just super interesting even seeing him kind of navigate with with this uh, new situation he's in because, you know, he, he tried to use uh, the shield when baby Madame Rouge was coming at yeah. him. And then, uh, you know, you had him try and uh, locate the Brotherhood in Florida. It's like grid, you know, act blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, oh, yeah, I can't use it anymore. And this and then he had to go get the laptop. So, you know, I, that's why I find it fascinating because the writers have given this character a blank slate all while finding himself at the same time. But it's, it's a new beginning in a way. Yeah. Um, and that's what I love about that so much. So this next question is quite interesting in terms of, you know, Doom Patrol has delved into the themes of exploring the characters, all the characters' identity each season, which is, you know, always so masterfully done. I always think, how can they do it again every single season? But there's always a way to do it. Uh, and so with season three, obviously going quite larger on the focus with that, with, you know, the, the sisterhood and they're like, who are you? Why are you? And everything. But what would you say is your favorite thing about season three when compared to other Doom Patrol seasons? Like, what does it do for you, um, you know, being a part of it that other seasons haven't quite done? Yeah, I think um, for me, season three uh, was a great opportunity for us to share a lot as a team. Um, I think that in previous seasons, because we're so built up on the character development of it all, we don't get the opportunities to to work together as much as the Doom Patrol and start to see elements and, um, yeah. and uh, you know, little drips and drabs of them actually being the Doom Patrol uh, together. And uh, it was fun. Like, and you, you even see it in the scheduling and on set, like, oh, wow, like we're actually uh, coming to work at the same time as everyone else on multiple days, you know? Yeah. And, and that's testament to the fact that these characters are together a lot more this season. And um, I think that even just for... Um, 
for uh for Vic specifically I've loved the fact that I've been able to this has been the deepest season yet for me as 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 a character also even as an actor I feel you know the materials that I've that I've been able to work with this season have allowed me to show more range as an actor and to be able to kind of you know really dig my teeth into it a lot more um and I think that there's also been a lot of uh, opportunity when it comes to the the comedy, and um, it's just <laughs> there's a lot of, a lot of fun factor um, elements to the show now. And season three, just uh, having Michelle Gomez, Madame Rouge, has been phenomenal. You know, such a great asset to to the squad, to the team as an actress, as a friend, and also um, as a as a cast member and as a character. And I think that that's kind of really brought a whole new dynamic. And um, and yeah, it's just been it's just been lovely. But yeah, I think that it, it, it's a lot more of a mature season. And another thing that I've I, I felt even when reading these scripts was that every episode felt like a huge event. Um, whereas there were some episodes in previous seasons that were kind of like tagged on to one another or like they were more continuous. Like this season, it's like there was a new big bad every episode for the first four or five episodes, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and it feels like a big event every time. So, yeah, those are a few things that I feel like with season three makes it so much different. And, um, and yeah, just uh, I've enjoyed it so much. It's been my favorite so far. Yeah, and I completely agree with you with that take. And, you know, when you talk about Michelle Gomez, is, you know, is there any um, discussions that happened on set, you know, because you were both uh, on Doctor Who? And, and and same with uh, Timothy, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that like, um, uh, so we was in the in the same seasons with um, Peter Capaldi. Didn't yeah. get to work together. Um, and this is that we had the same thing when we had uh, Rachel directing us. And the only two episodes of those seasons that Rachel didn't direct um, were the episodes that I was in. So we didn't get to work <laughs> together, although she was across the the um, the the who. Uh, universe as well but yeah it, it's 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 been great to um to connect with michelle in that way and and yeah the fans i, I remember posting a picture of us on on twitter and it was like just so good for the whovians because it was yeah. like ah you know anytime the family gets back together it's it's a blast um so yeah no nah, it's been it's been awesome um sharing the stage with her and and, and sharing the screen and and yeah she fit right in slotted right in as a as a I... great family member I definitely agree. She definitely, she just feels like she should always be a part of this show. You know, she just the way, just the the tenacious attitude she has, you know, and brings to the character and the and the squad, as you put it. it you know, I'm just looking forward to everyone seeing the finale. Um, yeah. And and you were also talking about obviously some of your scenes as an actor and stuff, and the range and you know what it's given you to work with this season, with some of them being really heavy. I mean, I've always found. Victor scenes, especially with Silas, so moving. Like all the way back into season one, I have friends who said they, you know, they were kind of weeping in the, you know, when you were holding Silas in the ant farm, and it, it, they just never failed those uh, duo scenes to to really hit home. And just you know, Doom Patrol in of itself is so relatable. So one of the scenes I was most engrossed in this season with yourself was episode five between you and Lloyd Malcolm's frenzy. What, what was it like filming that scene? Because, you know, when that came on and like the music, you know, the, it was like cellos and violin coming in. It was so powerful. Um, and I just felt like that was just so fantastically done. Yeah, that, that was, that was definitely one of my favorite scenes of the season. Um, and just have to give a big shout out to Shoshana. She's, she's mm. been and done a phenomenal job since season one, especially when it comes to writing material for Vic and some of my favorite episodes, you know, throughout episode two, episode five of season one. And, you know, um, Shoshana has done a, a phenomenal job. And I think that scene with Frenzy, it was, it was emotional uh, mm. in real life on, you know, on set, on the days we're shooting um, because of what it meant. And, and it was really the kind of launch pad for Vic and the discovery and the questioning of him trying to discover who he is and to be to be in a position where uh even as a as an actor and a creative and storyteller i'm reading this and i'm like this is so powerful because he it's broken down in a way where vic is this whole commentary on what it means to be black and him being questioned as to is he black because of what is seen ahead of that you know Mm. and it's like he he is a superhero first and then when you get, you know, the scene where we're in the um, in the toy store and we're looking back on the flashback and yep. and Silas is saying, look, you don't get an opportunity to make these mistakes. One one mistake can cost you your life. Like that's for a black man 
wherever you know especially um living in america that's a, that's a reality and and mm. it's something that really hits home and i think that for him to start having that question and even i kind of experienced as a as a black brit um that there is a a difference um between even uh, an african american and and you know the difference of when someone for example will hear my accent and it changes their view of me i'm still a black mm. man and and you know the the but the difference to them is oh he's a black british so that's different to african american just because we talk different so it's almost like there is a cloak that is either put on or removed when when i speak versus when i i, I don't speak and that same cloak is put on vic with his um his cybernetics and being cyborg versus being victor stone and so it's mm. just such a, a a strong commentary on on what it means in that battle uh, and which really has Vic, you know, questioning his identity and going on that that search for his identity to understand who he really is. And that catalyst was perfect for us to get into, you know, the second half of the season. I was going to say, did you think that was truly the straw that broke the camel's back for Vic to begin to begin that big change in his life from there on out? You know, the approximate man. It, it's like he was living rent free in his head from there on out. That's truly yeah. what you know, unraveled everything for him. Yeah, because at that point he goes on the search, you know, he goes yeah. to, to, to meet his mom. He goes and like, like he, he has all these questions at that point, which he needs answering. And, um, and so, yeah, that was different. Definitely the, the camel that um, broke the, the straw that broke the camel's back and yeah. that shift in the season that really has him embark on that journey to get these answers. So without any input from, you know, Jeremy Carver or the writers, what would you personally like to see Vic tackle in the future after season three, considering, you know, where Vic is at right now? I mean, are there any desires that you've had since day one for your character? Um, you know, one idea that I think quite a few fans are commenting on my reviews in the comment section is they wonder if they'll find a way of Silas and Vic working together to maybe be able to use some cyborg tech with the synthetic skin. Because they mentioned he's still mechanical underneath and that it's only skin deep. But you could argue maybe modifications maybe could somehow be made. I, I don't know. So is, have you got any ideas like that that is, you know, separate from the writers, but maybe you would think of where Vic could go next year? Yeah, I'm I'm really interested in seeing where the where the, the, the tech goes um and, and what that looks like. I, I'm really inspired by even um uh the cyborg and Vic in Young Justice and the design right. of that character and and the difference and you know him coming straight into Young Justice and seeing, you know, his design. I I'd love to understand, you know, what took place before that to to make him so different to the to the other cyborgs in which we've seen um and just really explore that i think that i would love to um to see uh a, an evolution for sure when it comes to um to cyborg and and his powers there's so much you know from the comics and and from you know teen titans and and all of that that i've experienced growing up or watching or reading um and there's such a big world for cyborg that we haven't even we haven't even started to kind of grace you know and i'd love to try and get into some of that and one of my biggest dreams, to be honest, is actually to be able to share a stage with um with Ryan Potter, who plays Beast Boy. Ah. Um, I, I would I would love to bring, especially like for myself as a fan and for the fans. I know that it's a big deal for me growing up watching Teen Titans and seeing that bromance between mm. um Vic and Gar, and it's never been seen in live action, you know. And obviously, the the funny thing is having Vic in the Doom Patrol and having yeah. you know Gar in the Titans. It's like, uh, will it ever yeah. happen? And, that's a cut above my pay grade, but yeah, it, that would be a dream just to see that come to fruition for the fans and, and, and for this world. So who knows? Um, we'll see what happens, but yeah, I, I would love to just bring as much of my childhood dream, which was everything I saw in Teen Titans, which is my biggest inspiration for the character also, um, to, to come to realization. So, um, yeah, there's, there's lots that could happen that, um, that can happen and, and, mm. and we pray and we'll see what happens. Man. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people when I was taking subscriber questions, which, which we'll get onto soon, they were saying, "Is Cyborg gonna join Titans?" And I was I was just thinking he probably can't <laughs> accurately answer that, but I but I bet you want to because I've heard you talk about it before, and you know with what you just said now, a lot of people want to see you and Ryan Potter together, and you know me even watching both shows and doing my breakdowns on it, you know I I, I definitely feel like Gar would really vibe with um, Vic. De definitely, definitely. Um, and it, it's, it's weird to think, I know it was a backdoor pilot in Titan season one, but, you know, technically that was, you know, Gar was there in Doom Manor in that version. So 
Who yeah, knows? Who yeah. knows what could happen? That would be wicked. That would be wicked. So what would you say? This one's a bit more of a simple one, but, you know, there, there's been crazy episodes this season. Uh, there's been, half, you know, that's my th- favorite thing. This show can make you laugh your ass off. It can make you cry. Uh, that There's crazy, crazy things. So whether it's the, the zombie episode or or the, the really heartfelt moments, what would you say your favorite episode was to shoot this season out of all of them? My favorite episode to shoot this season, um, it's it's shared for me between episodes four and episodes five. Okay. Um, I loved I love um, I loved episode four for the zombie the zombie patrol. I loved playing a zombie. It was so different. <laughs> it was so you know it, it was almost like okay, I'm coming out of playing Vic for an episode, and now I'm yeah. I'm in you know what I mean uh, Walking Dead. Um, yeah, but it was cool just to experience that the makeup, everything, the characterization of painting a zombie, yeah, you know, was, so um, was dope. Um, and episode five, that that scene with with Frenzy was just, yeah, was was just I had a lot of fun shooting that. Um, and and it, and I I didn't know what was coming after that, and so at that time I was I was kind of all head in. Um, mm. But but even in saying that, I, I think that I would have to give I'd have to give episode eight like episode eight was for me uh, one of my strongest performances um, on the show um, from my perspective and and I felt a lot of it and that conversation which took place um, yeah. between between myself and um, and my subconscious was was an amazing an amazing time and 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 i just felt so connected at that moment and and there was so much that was unearthed even for javan you know Mm. that that came to surface for and i was able to really bring some experiences to vic which i felt really hit home and and um and felt and so um yeah i think like episode four episode five and episode eight were my my favorites uh thus far um and 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 I also, you know, when, when I watch episodes, I then get a different perspective on them after okay. watching them. So I'm looking forward to to watching the 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 last two episodes, and and I might get a different perspective. Who knows? But um, yeah, for sure, four, five, and, and eight right now. Have, yeah, have the most for me. Yeah, it must be. Yeah, it must be really kind of strange, you know, being in it, but then kind of as you just said, watching it and kind of getting the 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 audience's perspective, you know, um. But yeah, that that I, I I agree. I really do agree. And I think, you know, it's your storyline has been um I think I've said it in some of my videos, it's just I feel like Vic out out of everyone somewhat finding their identity this season, you know, Madame Rouge literally finding her identity to other people kind of working uh, parts out for themselves. Vic has been the one who's been kind of at the peak of it, I feel out of anyone. He he's been really uh really in it, you know, with mm. everything he's had to deal with. Um and, and and you know, I, I was with everything your character's already been through, and and you say you've taken things out of that as well. It's it's kind of relevant to the next question. With what would you say has been the most challenging part of playing cyborg across all of the seasons of Doom Patrol? <laughs> it could be as simple of an answer as <laughs> sitting in the makeup chair, or obviously a lot a lot deeper than that with what you have to put into some of those scenes. Yeah, yeah, I think um, we could talk about a bit about that because it's, that's an interesting aspect that. Um is not really highlighted the makeup side of things is is definitely a thing um yeah. you know the the prosthetic uh and the practical appliance to the actual uh, costume itself you know uh uh laura jean who's our costume designer is phenomenal she designed the first iron man costume she designs costumes across titans or all of the yeah. shows um and she's phenomenal and the suit is like is is crazy you know it's it's beautiful um but yeah when it comes to television and television budgets there's just certain things that you can't get around and we don't yeah. have the budgets to be able to have everything cgi every single episode for 10 hours of television and so the practical appliances of having glue on my face every day or the prosthetic and wearing the gasket and things like that can be challenging at times especially shooting in atlanta when it's really hot and um on top of that having the suit which gets really warm and then on top of that having action or having something really physical um so that's definitely something um and um i think on the kind of 
uh the physical approach would, would definitely sorry the, the more um mental approach would definitely be the the balance i've really tried to strike a a, a balance uh, and lean more into the humanity of vic right you know we've seen versions of cyborg um like with the justice league approach and and um and ray who's done a phenomenal job um, but the take on it is very different. And my, my whole thing was that I always wanted to wanted Vic to be more human than, than cybernetic. You can see the cybernetic, you know, that he's yeah. a cyborg. And so I think the relatability for me, um, when it comes to teen Titans, which is my biggest inspiration, the cartoon version, um, was seeing Vic and him just being like one of the man them. One of the one mm. of the guys, one of the bros, you know, and that is the humanity side of things in which takes place. So I've tried really hard at working at keeping Vic Stone at the forefront of Cyborg, um, and that that has been difficult at times, um, especially when it comes to you know some of the conversations and things that we share. But yeah, I think that these scenes that I have with with Silas, with with Phil Morris, um, who is just a, an amazing mentor, friend, um, a father figure for me in real life as well as uh, on screen um those scenes have have been challenging in the sense of you know trying to get them across but at the same time it, there's been such an ease because our chemistry is 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 next to none and, and hopefully everyone's seeing that translated oh, yeah. on screen um so yeah those are some of the elements that I'd, I'd, I'd say are the kind of sticking points or challenges throughout the season and and, and playing Vic um and then just reading the scripts and, and thinking how on earth are they going to shoot this every single time <laughs> i get a script like yeah it's, it's, it's wild it must be yeah, it must be quite hard especially well sometimes when you're meant to imagine uh, a little baby madame rouge coming at you and you know jumping on it and stuff so i imagine that yeah. is it, that's quite hard to force yourself to kind of emulate that situation into real life yeah. I, I mean there's so many crazy ass situations in doom patrol that i can imagine are hard to uh, bring out in your imagination um so who who is your? This is just a curious question. Who is your favorite character on the show, and who would you say is Vix? I, I want to say Vix is maybe Cliff because I, I swear there's quite a few scenes with Cliff and Vix sometimes. But would you say that's true? I think that um, I think Vic's favorite um, is is definitely between uh, Cliff and Rita. The reason okay. why I say Cliff is I think there's a common ground which is shared there with the mm -hmm. you know the, the fact that they are both robots. Um, also, Cliff was the first ever member of the Doom Patrol that that Vic met, um, yeah. and I think that there is a bond as much as the banter and the the tongue and cheek that goes back and forth between them. There is definitely a, a bromance and a love there, um, and a relatability factor there. You can see as much as he gives him the shit, like Vic's always trying to help him out. He's always trying to. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, tend to um, Cliff when he can. And then I think there's a real soft spot for Rita. I think that uh, Vic yeah. has this uh, innate ability and wants to help and to develop and to see someone become the best version of themselves and to become, you know, a superhero. And Rita really is the one that, although there's been the biggest backlash, she's the one that's actually been trying and tried. Yeah. And they've had these moments where he's tried to coach her through and have a, you know, hone in on her abilities. And I think that he really, you know, shares a soft spot for Rita and that, that sisterhood that, that she provides him. Um, and, um, and yeah, and my favorite character would have to be crazy Jane. Um, yeah. I just, I, I, I think that is just, you know, a, a superhero with 64 different personalities and every single one of them has an individual superpower is like insane. And it's so original as a character, yeah. you know, and then Diane Guerrero just does an exquisite job at um, portraying that character or those characters, should I say. Um, and it's just amazing to watch on screen once I see the edit and then just, you know, on the day when she's actually performing. Um, so, yeah, that would be that would that would be. Yeah. Good answers. Good answers. And you've probably been asked this before, but I would love for you to tell us a bit about how you went just from, you know, the UK to LA and how you landed the role of Cyborg and navigated the industry from there on out, because I'm sure there's a few aspiring actors out there listening to this that, you know, because it must have been a dream come true, I can imagine. And there was quite a few questions um, that asked this, uh, which we're about to get onto a couple of the subscriber questions. Um, so, yeah, I'd love for you to tell us about that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I start, actually started out, um, I went to a place called the Brit School, Performing Arts School in London, more known for music, Adele, Amy Winehouse. 
um, but some actors like Tom Holland. Um, right. And um, I studied there for three years. In my third year, I ended up creating a web series online um, and it ended up being made into a television show. Off the back of that, that's when my career really started to pick up. And I did, you know, shows from EastEnders to uh, Big School to um, Doctor Who. And what I got to a place where after I did Doctor Who, that was really the um, the transition for me where I felt like, OK, um, you know, I, I, I know and I understand that I'm in love with sci-fi. And this world is where I really want to live as an actor and also action. Um, and so I don't feel like there are enough worlds that are, you know, within uh, the UK that would afford me that opportunity. So I decided that, okay, I need to make a jump now. I need to, you know, try and push to the US and try and get there. And off the back of that, it was about trying to come out, find a manager, find an agent, um, found a beautiful team with Atlas, um, who the production company, which creates, uh, you know, from Wonder Woman to yep. Batman versus Superman, etc. And I joined the management arm of that um, because I wanted to become a superhero. And so yeah. um, the first role that I got was uh, the first Purge and started in that movie in 2017. And um, I was actually seen by Greg Belanti in the first Purge. And um, off the back of that opening weekend, he hit my agent and they had been looking for Cyborg. And they said, you know, this is my, this is my Cyborg. And so uh, originally I was apprehensive because it was, um, okay. it was a, a dream role. Um, but it was, uh, it was a lot of time out of the uk and i also have several companies i have a production company a, a, a comedy network a talent management company and i was setting these things up and so i felt like you know nine months out of that could completely kill my companies right. and so it was a challenge for me to kind of work out if i was able to you know do that or not but after sitting with greg and um, with jeff johns and um and jeremy carver and and having the show pitched and understanding exactly what it would do and then being able just to play my favorite black superhero, um, it was like, it's, it's, it's a done yeah. deal, isn't it? And um, off the back of that, it was like, yeah, let's do it. And then it's um, worked out well Atlanta now. And, <laughs> and it's worked out, yeah, 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 it's worked out very well. So um, <laughs> yeah, it's a blessing, it's a dream come true. And um, I, I could, yeah, wake up every day, like pinching myself still being at this, this opportunity. And um, yeah, just want to do the fans proud and, and everyone that loves Vic and Cyborg and, try and give oh, them truly. the representation that they that they um that they truly deserve um jay skates asks what is the best part of playing cyborg other than maybe what you've already said about you know obviously wanting to play a superhero and actually landing that role what would you would you say is the best part of it i think the best part of playing a superhero would be the world i think being able to as an actor we get into this because we um we want to imagine right our imagination is the is the most important thing and i think that being a superhero the worlds that we get to enter into and that we get to work with are are so wild and so wacky and so wonderful that we get to really expand our imagination um and do what we want to do as an actor which is yeah. being and playing in spaces that just don't exist so i think that's definitely you know as a kid um it's a dream because i, I get to really uh play and um and i have a load of imaginary friends when you're in uh, in front of that camera so um yeah the world that playing a superhero affords you is probably my favorite aspect is is han arif i'm probably going to butcher some of these names they ask um what was it like filming the dancing scene at the end of vacay patrol did it feel special at all to you and the cast as a fan watching it, it was so amazing to see them dancing and enjoying themselves for a moment is one of my absolute favorite scenes from the entire show your version of cyborg is my absolute favorite and i agree oh, that that nice, scene nice. where everyone starts dancing ah oh, there was there's something special about that with how it cut to Kay and then jane and you know everyone joined in together yeah yeah i think that you know those moments where you see the characters um having fun we're really having fun in real life you know so mm. like that scene that dance scene it was like first of all from the choreography that we got to go through in order to learn what that dance routine is going to be yeah. um to then being on set and being on stage and and actually going through with it is is amazing it's fun it's wacky it's wonderful and also it's a break away from all of the craziness or you know some of those more heartfelt moments that we have to just mm -hmm. really have a laugh and just kind of laugh at each other's steps and work out what our dance is going to be and um and yeah it's 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 as magical creating it as it is viewing it
Yeah, that's good to hear. Uh, I, yeah, that's I just I freaking love that scene so much. Um, and then we had Samuelson come in and just ruin it all. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Skybound asks, what has impacted you the most that's come from working on Doom Patrol so far? And in addition, how has it shaped you as both an actor and a person? We, we might have already touched upon that, but would you say it's what you've kind of learned out of some of the issues that are being made very relevant this season and what you were delving into some of those questions earlier? Or is there more that has impacted you from working on Doom Patrol so far? Yeah, I think I think the understanding that um, you can have a show which has so much within it and it can still be so character driven um, is yeah. one thing that's really kind of affected me. And I've also learned because our show is very, very character driven and character centric. You know, you look at a superhero show and usually it's all about the fighting and mm. the killing and the, the, the big bad. But our show is, is not that. It's all about the characters and character development and the issues and being able to touch on such sensitive subjects and issues but at the same time still being uh able to give all the love and the fluff and the fun and the comedy that we get with it at the same time you know and i think at the same time what's really affected me is what i've learned as an actor um it's a show that is so crazy and there's so much going on there isn't many other shows or movies that you would do where you haven't had some level or some aspect of experience that we haven't had on the doom patrol because we go mm -hmm. through so much you know from Get, getting shoved up a donkey's ass to fighting butts to yeah. having a time machine to you know there's so much that we have the stunts you know um so yeah that that experience and the learning that i have from that is is probably the biggest thing that i've been that i've learned abul sharma says and i i definitely think there must have been but was there any physical transformation involved for playing cyborg because in the latest scene man you were so jacked when you got off the operating table but I'm, i was wondering did you have that shape before season one um or did you kind of as they're asking any physical transformation that you really got into to uh have this role yeah no 100 percent um i think for anyone wondering what life was like before vic um <laughs> to check out check out the first purge um and you can okay. see that i was not at all jacked um i was physically fit i played a lot of sport i played football um you know us call it soccer um uh before at a high level professionally and semi-pro after a while as well um and so i did a lot of that and was always athletic but in terms of the muscle mass that i put on yeah i put on probably about 40 pounds of muscle mm. um uh playing that role and um fitness has always been something that has been huge for me i've, I've even you know started my own fitness app um called okay. ways workout which i'm about to launch in a couple of weeks to help others to transform their bodies and um working with my PT who helped transform mine, shout out to Lorenzo. Um, and so, yeah, it's something that I had to get into and, and didn't want to disappoint the fans. I have an ideal and a, and, a, and a vision of what Vic was and who he should be if I wasn't playing the character. And Vic is a high school footballer and he is a jock and he is a superhero and he is jacked. And so you yeah. cannot step into that role without being that, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I had to go through vigorous training regimes in order to be able to uh, build that body that that you saw in in episode um end of episode eight when he gets off that operating table so Sirens um defaran asks what's the greatest thing about being on the set or show of doom patrol would you say it's the cast and maybe how close you've got with them over the years or is it just being in that world yeah i think it's 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 a few things being in the world is just crazy i think as a as a filmmaker storyteller an actor seeing the sets the sets are crazy bro like yeah. you come to set like and all these things like we have a we have a studio and most of what you i would say like 80 90 percent of what we shoot is is in the studio so okay. these sets in which you see they are built from scratch from a, right. a phenomenal creative team and just going into seeing um you know what these sets look like is is phenomenal and it's like how did you create that with just materials and stuff um and then yeah the biggest thing would be would be the cast like you know playing in a series where you're with each other every single day for six to eight months is a lot and if it wasn't the family that it was then you probably have a tough time because it's already tough you know you're doing 14 15 hour days um and so doing it with people that you love you care about and that make it just as fun um you know playing all these different games charades whatever it is to keep our mind off of things and just um you know even outside of filming 
we are really, really good friends and we are a real family and, and that's great that comes hear. across and you see that. So, yeah, man. And Eric C asks, I know we've already talked about Teen Titans being a big inspiration for you, but did you know anything about Doom Patrol comics before auditioning for the role? I mean, I personally didn't um, before the show got announced, but if not, did you launch yourself into Cyborg comics or was it mainly Teen Titans, as you as you said? Yeah, um, I, I, I knew of Doom Patrol because there okay. was, um, I read an article back in the day, um, which was cross-referencing cross Doom Patrol and the X-Men. Um, okay. and uh, and it was just basically talking about, you know, the differences, similarities, et cetera, and, and the world of, of what it was. And that was kind of it. And it stopped at that. I hadn't read any of the comic books. Um, I, I, I hadn't, you know, dived into any of that world. Um, but there were uh, some of the, the cartoons that I had seen um, back in the day on like Cartoon Network and stuff, yeah. uh, which had some of the Doom Patrol characters that were coming. But at the time, you didn't really know who they were. So yeah. it was just kind of like, oh, there was just these weird characters. Um, and then later on down the line, it's like, oh, those, that was the Doom Patrol. Um, so that's where it was. But yeah, when it came to my materials, um, I sourced just mainly from Teen Titans, mainly from Cyborg, Cyborg Rebirth, and, and looked heavily into um, Vic because there wasn't any materials for me to look at from the Doom Patrol to gather from, for Vic. Um, and so, yeah, that's what I dived into. And I watched Teen Titans and Red Titan comics from when I was a, just, a, just a mere boy. So um, that definitely really helped. And that is more or less all of the uh, subscriber questions. I just I kind of want to end it on just one or two more things. And that is anything to tease for the finale, if you could at all tease that for the fans watching. Because this yeah. will be up before that episode airs. So. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I think that uh, the finale is... is um it's it's full circle it, it, it allows yeah. us to to really kind of which i'm really thankful about wrap up our season because we didn't get to do that last season and it was yeah. something that was was heartbreaking because you know although it kind of came out and everyone knew that we didn't get to finish the show so it was forgiven but it was still difficult to kind of stomach but we get to kind of come full circle there's there's a lot that gets explained and there's a a, a big launching pad which you know really starts to set up the possibilities oh, yeah. or what could take place for the fourth season and so yeah. it's really exciting and um yeah even for for vic it's it's emotional it's it's it's, it's brave and and it's heart-wrenching and um yeah you're just gonna love it so dive in and yeah. um yeah i hope you guys really enjoy it and i just want to say thank you to everyone that is watching the show thank you to you too bro because um i've been watching your videos and i love your breakdowns and um oh, thank you. yeah it's, it's it's dope just to to see how much uh, effort that you put into this stuff and um, the love and the care that you have for your community. And um, yeah, we share the same. So yeah, thank you. And I, 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 it's so easy to do when the show's so good. And I know what you mean about that launching pad. I was like, damn, okay, okay. Uh, you know, one of that very final scene um, is like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. That, that's very yeah. interesting for next season. And, yeah. and, and the last thing is, um, you know, you mentioned the, the fitness app, but I wanted to know if you've got anything else going on that people can find you outside of Doom Patrol. I know you had Wade's World and the YouTube channel and things, and you've got your website, but is there any anything uh very present that you're doing other than the app or maybe talk more about the app yeah yeah like i'm uh, i so ways world in terms of the youtube videos i put on hold and so if you guys are interested yeah i have some youtube videos um talking about you know uh some acting tips and just kind of general uh, help, uh motivation and self-help i'm very much into that uh, as much as vic is trying to you know help people become the best versions of themselves javan is also really passionate about that too and um, I, I will continue to build that out. And why I took a back step on the, the YouTube videos is because I want to create major assets for all of the things underneath Wade's World. So Wade's Workouts, having this fitness app um, and actually building something tangible for my community. Um, and then separate to that, you know, Wade's Wisdom and the inspiration and self-help and, and development, um, as well as Wade's Words, my spoken word, which I'm going to be pushing a lot more. Um, so, yeah, you can kind of keep in tune with all of that. Uh, via instagram um okay. at javan wade and yeah i'm also on twitter so drop me a tweet um and yeah i just started tiktok and i'm late to the party but i just started that and um yeah i'm gonna be be making some tiktok some inspirational motivational content as well as just some wacky wild stuff and and some character improvisation stuff so yeah i'm looking forward to it all man 
Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be keeping up with you. But thank you for everything, honestly. And I would love to speak to you again sometime in season four or something. That would be fantastic. Sure, bro. 100%. Um, I, I'm down. I, I just really appreciate the opportunity because I've been watching you for years now, covering this show for years. So having this you know, opportunity to dump this on my channel is, you know, I think people are going to really enjoy the insight that we've discussed today. And, you know, from a fellow UK man, <laughs> just, just thank you. <laughs> thank you too, bro. Appreciate you, man. So everyone, if you enjoyed that, just a quick reminder to if you've, especially if you've got to this part of the video, leave a like on it. It takes two seconds. I mean, you're already here. You may as well click the thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed, why not subscribe? I will be covering Doom Patrol way into season four with updates and hopefully other discussions like this with other writers, maybe uh, Doom Patrol actors. And who knows? Who knows what may come in the, in the future of this channel? But I want to thank you all for your support. Big Thank you to Javan Wade for also just giving me his time to chat. And I think that's everything. So I hope you enjoyed this little bonus video going into the finale next week. And yeah, just to let you know, as you could probably tell from the interview, I've seen the finale and you guys are in for a treat. And it's, you know, one thing I will say is it's very satisfying getting an actual wrap up episode this season since last season, you know, they only had two days left of production and that's when the pandemic hit. So they couldn't fully get what they wanted. And this year they could. So yeah, very excited for you all to see that. I don't really have anything else to say other than just check me out in other places and check Javan out in the in the places that he mentioned at the end. That would be awesome. I have links in the top pin comment uh, to social media, such as my Twitter. And hey, if you want to talk to me further, I do have a Discord server as well, a little community where we can talk about Doom Patrol. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you Doom Patrollers in the next video. Goodbye.